Hello everyone, this is Noah, and it's the Hidden Comics for the week of November 21st, 2013. Alrighty, so this week we are reviewing Ultimate Comics Spider-Man Cataclysm Number 1 from Marvel, and Transformers More Than Meets the Eye, Issue 23 from IEW, Part 2 of the Dark Cybertron Saga. So let's kick things off with Spidey. We'll save the best for last. Actually, both of these comics could be considered the best picks of the week, but I'll leave that up to you to decide based on the reviews, or your own opinion, because that's what reviews are, just opinions. So to start off, Ultimate Comics, Cataclysm, Spider-Man number one. As we all know, Age of Ultron kind of happened earlier this year, and a whole bunch of wibbly wobbly timey wimey resulted because Apparently, the Avengers decided to screw around with the space-time continuum to destroy Ultron, and now Galactus has been dropped straight into the smack dab in the middle of the Marvel Universe. And meanwhile, Miles Morales, the new Ultimate Spider-Man, who replaced the unfortunately deceased Ultimate Peter Parker, leaving Peter Parker not really around in any of the Spider-Man titles except for the one also called Ultimate Spider-Man that's based on the Disney XD show. Comics are confusing, but we love them anyway. Probably the reason why we love them. Gives us something to think about to help us go to sleep at night. Or in my case, keep us up, but I digress. So, Miles Morales at school, trying to live a normal life, doing, you know, what typical teenagers do in school, which was, you know, sleep through class. And after taking a year off, due to the death of his mother, he's back as Spider-Man, thanks to the... The Ultimates member, Spider-Woman, who in the beginning of the issue has a meeting with the Ultimates, and it turns out they've actually never known that she was a genetic clone of Peter Parker. Oh, spoilers for those of you who never read Ultimate Spider-Man back in the 2000s. And there are people out there. People, for some people, Miles Morales is probably the first Spider-Man, and that's perfectly okay, because Miles is hilarious in this issue. I absolutely love the scene where he swings into action and tries to break up a giant fight on the streets. And the police, when they show up, they get even better and slightly more heartwarming. Meanwhile, we see that Bombshell and Cloak and Dagger, three of the escapees from the Roxxon Corporation who experimented on them and transformed them into actual superheroes, have decided they don't want to be just experiments. They actually want to be superheroes, which means that... Basically, who knows? Maybe this, we're going to get the ultimate version of the Spider Friends. But it may be too little too late as Galactus has come to Ultimate Earth and he's got just like a big like empty stomach. He's gonna freaking eat this whole place to shreds. Can Spider-Man stop him with the combined help of the X-Men and the Ultimates? We'll find out. But for now, I really enjoy this issue. Um, uh, if you haven't read Ultimate Spider-Man or the, uh, well, the current Ultimate Spider-Man that began back in 2011. I suggest that you definitely go over and read that. You can catch up on it with trades and everything. There's, you know, the most current storyline is Spider-Man No More. Not to confuse with the regular Marvel Spider-Man No More. But the trades, I believe there's about... Most of the current storylines up to Spider-Man No More are available, and you can read them, you can buy them, you can download them off of Marvel's app or whatever the website. So, definitely get to those so you can get caught up before you dive into Cataclysm. Because you might be a little bit lost in the story. Which is kind of the reason that it's so hard to get people into comics. But I guess that's why they're getting rid of the Ultimate Universe. I was thinking maybe they could just stick with what they were doing, because people were kind of liking the relaunched Ultimate for the most part. Especially Spider-Man. But Marvel has to be a bunch of dicks and take out one of my favorite parts of their company. Thanks, Marvel. Give yourselves a round of applause, you idiots. But before I start cursing like a sailor and having to censor out this entire rest of the video, let's move on to some happier comics. Not that that comic wasn't happy, it just wasn't. Sorry, I'm still trying to get over the fact that Marvel's actually canceling the Ultimate line after almost 10 years now, or I think, yeah, over 10 years, going on 13. But enough about Marvel. 
It's time to check in with some Transformers, robots in disguise. But this is actually their series more than meets the eye. It's Chapter 2 of Dark Cybertron. Previously, the dead universe has showed up and is beginning to swallow up the Golem, Golram, sorry, Prime planet. And with Optimus back amongst Rodimus and his crew on the Lost Light, it seems that the universe is tearing itself apart. Starscream has been elected leader of Cybertron? The Autobots are in the Badlands? Metroplex has just shown up? Except he's possessed by Dark Energon. And he's under Shockwave's control? The Decepticons have a Titan on their side. The Autobots may not just make it out of this one, guys. But who cares? It's time for some wacky antics with Starscream, everyone's favorite seeker and rat trap. Everyone's favorite comic relief from Beast Wars. Well, I mean, aside from Lost Man here, but he's not in this issue, unfortunately. Even though he is part of the roll call at the beginning for the storyline. So hopefully we'll see him turn up in future parts. Maybe next chapter. So in chapter 2, entitled Dark Metal, a black, a black Metal of Dark Cybertron, Getting my terms mixed up. As I mentioned, we joined the Autobots, Bumblebee, Ironhide, RC, and the Dinobots, minus Grimlock for some reason. As it appears that Metroplex has returned, but not on their side. However, he just kind of stands there like a statue. And just kind of has a freaky looking face. And doesn't really do anything, but he's still kind of nightmare fuel with just that face. Glowing purple eyes and gaping glowing mouth. They really know how to paint a gruesome picture of robots over at IDW, and I freaking love them for it. Meanwhile, Orion Pax, as he apparently is going by now, you know it's clearly Optimus Prime, has returned, as I said, amongst Ultra Magnus and Rodimus Prime, who's the current leader of the Autobots, apparently. And they're trying to figure out a way to get into the dead universe because it has Cybertron on its sights. Until Brainstorm tells them that he's been analyzing it, and apparently it's ultra benevolent. Which means as soon as it senses that they're in there, it'll kill them because they're not natives to the universe. So they concoct a little force field made out of cyber rape venom. And meanwhile, Star screams, having a conversation with his old pal, the Autobot Scoop, who apparently has stumbled upon a prophecy from the ancient dynasty of the Primes. Which means... something's about to go down. And Shockwave may be involved. Speaking of Shockwave, he's off plotting with Gal... with... Bleh. Oh wait, yes, that's right, Galvatron and Nova Prime, the original leader of Cybertron. And something is about to go down. Because it seems... That Soundwave is called in the cavalry on the Autobots stranded on the planet in the city, outskirts of the city, anyway, sorry. And he's brought up the cavalry. He's got triple changers with them, and he's got his cassette tape buddies, and they're about to kick some ass. Some shiny metal ass. And meanwhile, Optimus, Cyclonus, Rodimus, and Ultra Magnus are stranded in the dead universe, and they've got big problems and big company. So, what's in store for our favorite robots in the skies? Who's to say? Uh, definitely, I'm enjoying Dark Cybertron so far. It's probably one of the biggest Transformers events in years, and there's been a lot of hype leading up to this, and does it live up to the hype? I'd say based on the first two chapters, for the most part, yeah. It's interesting, because we're seeing a lot of crossovers of generations. We have the current G1 Guys, you know, Cyclonus, Rodimus, Optimus, Magnus, Galvatron. Mixed in with some of the guys from Beast Wars, such as Rat Trap and Waspinator, as I mentioned. And for some reason, Starscream is sporting this awesome Armada look. You know, where he was like the cool red jet with the missile launchers and everything on his shoulders. I actually have that toy still. It's kind of... It's, it's wings, though. Which means he's not really much of a jet. This is definitely a comic that you should go out and buy. You should definitely also go out and buy Ultimate Spider-Man Cataclysm number one. Just make sure to get caught up if you haven't first, because you might be out of the loop. So, two go out and buy it now. It's two glowing recommendations and two nice comics. So, this has been the Hidden Comics for the week of November 21st, 2013. I'm Noah, and I'll see you all next time.